Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining UCLA Samueli's new Master of Engineering Information webinar. Before we start, I just want to make sure that you know we are recording this webinar for those who could not join us. To start off the program, we would like to make sure that you know you can use the Q&A function to submit your questions. We'll try to get to them during the Q&A uh, session at the end of the program, and we can always follow up if your questions is not addressed. To start off the program, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Christine Lee. I'm the Executive Director of Communications of UCLA Samueli School of Engineering. I'd like to introduce Associate, Associate Dean Jamie Yen, who is the Faculty Director of this new program, who is also in charge of our international initiative and online programs. Dean Yen. Uh, thank you, Christine. I'd like to welcome uh, you to this uh, webinar. Uh, we are very honored to have uh, Dean uh, Jayati Murthy and several faculty area director to join the webinar. Uh, before I start, it's my honor to introduce Dean Jayati Murthy to say a few words. Well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you to this webinar, this informational webinar. Uh, we're going to be telling you a bit about our exciting new uh, Master of Engineering program. Uh, this program is really quite unique. It's unique because its focus is on developing technical mastery in uh, new and exciting areas, but also to develop uh, business and technology management skills side by side, uh, as well as working on real world projects. So we think this combination is really unique and I, uh, I know there's a lot of interest uh, in it. Now, these technology concentrations are in areas such as data science, translational medicine, green energy technologies, all of which are cutting edge areas that should be of deep interest to both our students and to industry. Uh, and speaking of industry, the program has the blessings of all our industry partners. Uh, and of course comes with UCLA Samueli's uh, high academic standards. And so welcome again. Um, I hope you find today's webinar really useful. We're all here uh, to answer your questions. So thank you for attending. Uh, Jenming, all yours. Uh, thank you, Dimothy. Uh, let me also introduce uh, the area of uh, faculty area directors. Okay. So Professor Cho from Computer Science, the faculty area director for Data Science, uh, Professor Song Li from Bioengineering, faculty area director for Translational Medicine, uh, Professor Bruce Dang uh, from Material Science and Engineering. A faculty Area Director for Green Energy Systems. Uh, Professor Askin from Computational Medicine and also Computer Science, the Faculty Area Director for Digital Health Technology. Uh, professor Guy Vandenbroek, a professor from the Computer Science, who is also the Faculty Area Director for Artificial Intelligence. Uh, professor T.C. Chow from the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, uh, who is the uh, faculty area director for autonomous system. Uh, unfortunately, he has to teach today from four to six, but I will uh, speak on his uh, behalf. Okay. So uh, the faculty area director uh, later on will have a brief introduction about their program. As the Dean Murthy mentioned that, Okay, so uh, we initiated uh, the uh, idea of setting up the Master of Engineering program several years ago, based upon the fact that there is a strong demand from a wide variety of high tech sectors for the new breed of cross disciplinary engineers who understand the technical business and management aspect of technology. Okay. So under the guidance of Dean Murthy and the support from the, uh, the faculty, as well as the department chair. So we prepared and submitted a proposal and went through the UC approval process. And finally, uh, back in uh, right before the end of the spring quarter of this year, so um, our proposal was officially approved. 
And so I'd like to briefly go through the program and the requirements as well as the admission criteria with you. And then I'll ask, I'll, I'll invite the faculty area director to briefly talk about their program. And finally, we'll leave plenty of time for Q&A. Okay. So the Master of Engineering uh, um, uh, program uh, have been established that by many top tier engineering schools across the country uh, for students uh, whose primary goal is a professional career in industry. So this uh, program essentially is designed as a professional master's program. And it is uh, a one year full time on campus uh, program. So, it, so it's a one calendar year. So it will go through four quarters, okay, including summer. And our plan is to have a 50 inaugural spot uh, uh, students okay, uh, for fall 2021. And thereafter, we will increase uh, the student um, population by 50 for each, uh, uh, each subsequent years. So by the end of the fourth year, okay, we should have 200 students in the program. So the requirement for this Master of Engineering degree is very much the same uh, in terms of number of units okay, uh, as all the on-campus MS uh, degree students. It requires 36 units. Okay. Uh, out of the 36 units or nine courses, so we will have five courses in each um, uh, technology concentration. And as Dean Murthy also mentioned that okay, we have a very strong uh, business, business and management uh, uh, courses uh, available for the students. The students need to take three courses in this recorded engineering professional development sequences. Okay, so that will cover uh, business and management. Okay. And finally, all the students need to complete a capstone project. I will have more detailed information about the capstone project. And the tuition and fees for the 2021 to 22 academic year uh, will be $50,400. Uh, it's uh, $1,400 per unit. And plus uh, we need to, uh, to pay the quarterly fees um, uh, to the campus. Okay, that will allow you to access the wooden centers and uh, other uh, campus uh, facilities. And the admission criteria are the same as those set by the graduate division. We also have set aside some um, um, uh, funds for financial support. So this is just a, a brief introduction about admission criteria. As we mentioned that this is pretty much the same as those uh, set uh, forth from the graduate division. Okay. So um, you need to have a minimum undergraduate GPA of 3.0 and we need three letters of recommendations. Okay. Uh, GRE scores, and uh, which is optional for 2021 cohort. Okay. For international uh, um, applicants, okay, we also need TOEFL or ELTS uh, scores and a personal statement as well. Uh, I'd like to mention that okay, even though we welcome the mid-career students okay, with working industry, but working history in industry is not uh, required. Okay, so uh, as uh, Dean Murthy just mentioned that, okay, and we have uh, established the six interdisciplinary technology concentration. Okay. So these six areas are autonomous systems, uh, digital health technology, data science, artificial intelligence, uh, green energy systems, and translational medicines. So these areas are really at the forefront of technology innovation. 
and will have a significant impact on society. And these are also the areas in which the School of Engineering and Applied Science is highly reputed. Okay. Again, uh, the uh, faculty area director will come back to uh, briefly introduce their program. And the other unique feature of this program is that the students enrolled in the Master of Engineering program will take courses with other students from several academic uh, departments. So this is essentially a mixed enrollment. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned that uh, uh, every students need to complete five technical courses plus the three engineering professional development courses and a capstone project. So here is just a sample curriculum for data science. Okay, so we have a sample curriculum available in each area uh, from our website. Okay. So in the fourth quarter, the students will take two technical courses okay, plus one uh, engineering professional development uh, elective okay, with a total of 12 units. Okay. And um, in the winter quarter, we have two technical courses. Uh, and the spring quarter, we have one technical course plus one engineering professional development elective. And in the summer quarter, the students will take the last engineering professional development elective plus four units of capstone project. So at the end of the summer quarter, um, the students who completed all the course requirement and the capstone project will receive a master of engineering degree of, um, from UCLA. Okay. So the diploma is in master of engineering and we will also issue a separate certificate uh, for you in each of the technology concentration that you enrolled in. So here are just a, a, a sample courses for the engineering professional development uh, uh, elective. Okay. So currently the school has offered uh, several courses in this areas. Okay. So here are just some examples. We have engineering 201, technical project management, engineering 215, that's en entrepreneurships for engineers, engineering 214, and management communication, engineering 188, a product development strategy. And also uh, this another faculty is developing a new course uh, called leadership and innovation. Okay? And we will also expand this uh, course sequence as more and more students are in the program. Okay, so uh, uh, just uh, very briefly about the capstone project. So all the students must enroll and complete a capstone project. Okay, so that will synthesize and integrate all the technical skills that you obtain through the master's program. Okay. And um, the project topic will be selected by the course instructor, okay, based upon the current strength, current trends in each technology and based upon the input from the faculty in each um, uh, uh, technology concentration, as well as very importantly, based upon the industry input. So we will closely work uh, working with um, um, the industry okay, and to solicit uh, the project, which is a real life uh, capstone project Okay. The industry partner may also provide a senior engineer to be the co-advisor or the co-sponsor of uh, the capstone project. Okay. So basically, we would like to provide important linkage between the mass of engineering students and also uh, different industrial sectors. Okay. And this will be a, a small a group project. So a team of three to four students, we will work together in a group and we'll conduct hands-on analysis, design, testing, um, 
as appropriate. And a final project report will be turned in and a presentation will be made to the faculty capstone committee and the entire class. Okay. So the capstone project will also serve as a comprehensive written uh, exam requirement. So there is no thesis required for this program. So in terms of student advising, and um, so we have uh, student affairs officers, SAO, and also we have uh, the faculty area director as well as the faculty participating in each technology concentration. Uh, in terms of other ongoing support, okay, uh, we will have a staff position available. Uh, it's a career placement advisor, okay, and his or her role essentially is to coordinate with uh, industry recruiters, as well as coordinate with the campus career placement office to help, uh, match, to help matching the employers. Okay. And uh, so, as I just mentioned that, okay, the intent of the Capstone project is to connect students with industry sponsor to build um, uh, a personal networking and, and also for the career guidance. Uh, as Dean, Dean Murphy mentioned that uh, we have uh, several um, um, industry partnerships. Okay, so we have received a strong letter of support uh, from um, several companies, including Northrop Grumman, including the Google, uh, HRL, Xerox, okay, and the list is, is currently expanding. And we are also working with uh, a lot of local uh, industry, for example, a lot of startups in the Silicon Beach area in Santa Monica. Okay. And uh, so again, we would like to build a very strong network, okay, so that we can help the student uh, to, to land a job after uh, they complete their degree. Okay. So um, the next, um, I'd like to invite uh, uh, each uh, faculty area director to briefly uh, describe uh, their program. And um, so, uh, as I mentioned that Professor Chow is teaching currently, so I will uh, briefly introduce the autonomous systems. Okay. So the Master of Engineering program in autonomous system is designed to prepare students to work in a spectrum of, of autonomy, including self-driving cars, unmanned uh, air, uh, aircraft systems, uh, for example. Okay. And uh, these uh, autonomous systems have the ability to perceive, to learn, and act with self-awareness and respond intelligently to unforeseen change in environment. Okay. So, um, so certainly we believe strongly that these systems will have the potential to deeply impact the society. Okay. And in terms of uh, the coursework, okay, so uh, we basically want to integrate faculty expertise from several uh, departments that include in mechanical and aerospace engineering, electrical and computer engineering, as well as uh, computer science. Okay. So the topic of the, the courses that the student can take that include um, the dynamic systems and control, the machine learning, uh, optimization, sensor technology, AI, ambitions, and so on. Okay. Next, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Askin to uh, talk about the digital health technology. Hi, thank you for the opportunity to discuss this program. So I'm Ellie Azar Askin. I'm the chair of a new department called Computational Medicine which is a joint venture between the David Geffen School of, of Medicine and the School of Engineering. And the area that I, that the program that I'm leading is called the Digital Health Technology, which combines data science, mobile health, health informatics technology, wearable health, signal processing, all to analyze biomedical data. And the courses span many different departments. It's a great program. 
there's a great research going on both in engineering and medicine. This is a great way for individuals in the industry to connect to these efforts. Thank you. Next, I'd like to, like to introduce Professor Zhang Cho uh, from computer science uh, about uh, his program in data science. Hello, everyone. Welcome to UCLA uh, seminar. Um, no, my name is Zhang Cho. I'm a professor in the computer science department, and I'm leading the efforts for the data science program of our master's of engineering program. And we all kind of fully appreciate that this is really the era of big data. There is just so much data being generated from everywhere. And we also know that by being, AI, by being able to leverage all the data that is generated, somehow if we can make some sense out of it, there will be a lot of values and knowledge that can be discovered from it. So the goal of our data science program is to equip you with the knowledge, both theoretical and practical knowledge about how can we make sense out of these large amounts of data. And in order to do that job very well, in terms of the practical side, we need to know what are the tools that are available. There are a lot of popular tools that are being used today, like Python, and maybe some deep learning libraries, and maybe some of these old advanced like probabilistic reasoning tools and also distributed computation system like Sparks, et cetera. So what, uh, on one side of our program, we want to introduce these tools to you so that later when there is a need for using these tools, you feel comfortable using them, right? So that is on one practical side. And on the other side, more of a theoretical side is that in order to discover patterns or make sense of the data, available data, we need to know how we can analyze it and what are the mathematical and probabilistic tools that we can use and algorithms that we can use in order to somehow look into the data, explore the data and make some sense out of it. So for the classes, what we will do is that during the lecture, we will go over this theoretical and algorithmic computational uh, models and theory. And then for the projects, you will be able to use these tools to analyze the real world data. And our curriculum is designed to be covering both of this practical and the theoretical side. And most of our programs like fundamentals in data science and database management systems or deep learnings or natural language processing, they all kind of designed around this general theme of teaching the theory and the actual practice of using the real tools. So I'm looking forward to working with you to kind of explore this exciting area of data science. Thank you. Next, Hi, I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Guy van den Broek, uh, the Faculty Area di Director for Artificial Intelligence. Hello. So, um, of course, welcome, everyone. Um, I don't think I have to say that much about what is AI. I think you've seen it uh, everywhere. It's about building algorithms that behave intelligently, that can make predictions that are complicated, explain data, play games and solve complicated problems. And um, so why would you want to maybe uh, study AI at UCLA engineering? So uh, let me advertise a little bit why we're maybe one of the best places to study AI. So there's a really vibrant AI ecosystem at UCLA. So we of course have the medical school and digital health uh, initiatives. We have the law school. Everyone is, is essentially doing AI these days, but especially within the engineering school, um, you know, from mechanical engineering, where we have world-renowned robotics experts, to electrical and computer engineering, where we have world-renowned computer vision and signal processing people, uh, to my department, which is the computer science department. Uh, we, we, we have a lot of experts uh, in the field. And so uh, historically, I would say uh, UCLA is considered to be one of the top two schools, maybe top three schools to do uh, AI. Uh, for example, Yuda Pearl uh, won the Turing Award, which is the Nobel Prize in computer science, kind of, uh, for his work on AI. Uh, the first time we solved the Rubik's Cube with AI, it was done at UCLA. Uh, but those things are, of course, history. And so today, what the school has done is invest a lot in very uh, junior stars in the field. And so those are also the people that will be teaching the graduate courses in this program. Uh, and of course, our students that graduate, they also have a great reputation 
uh, among the top tech companies that uh, in Silicon Beach and outside, and so they are hired to work uh, on AI. And maybe very quickly, you know, what will these five technical courses look like that you take when you, you take this uh, AI concentration? So of course, there will be a deep learning course. There are actually several options in different departments. And so this will be really valuable because this is driving a lot of the uh, value for industry. Uh, then there will be courses on specific application areas of machine learning. So in natural language processing, computer vision. Uh, then there's a bunch of course, courses that, that uh, are offered at the graduate level uh, that are maybe more like core machine learning, things like large scale machine learning, deep generative models, reinforcement learning. And then finally, there's uh, courses that are uh, falling under the umbrella of maybe core AI, traditional model based AI, things like Bayesian networks, causality and uh, probabilistic programming. Uh, so there's uh, plenty of stuff uh, available for you to study when you uh, choose this concentration. Thanks. Thank you. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Professor Bruce Stand, the Faculty Area Director for Green Energy Systems. Hello, everyone. My name is Bruce Dunn. I'm the Chairman of the Department of Material Science and Engineering, and I'm also the Area Director for Green Energy Systems. And very briefly, to tell you about this, first, there's just a few points I want to make. First of all, our future without question depends upon the development of green energy. So it's a fabulous area for technological development and of course, business opportunities. The field itself is inherently interdisciplinary. And so it involves people and courses uh, in material science, but also in chemical and bio, uh, biomolecular engineering, mechanical and aerospace engineering and electrical and computer engineering. So all of that is inherent in the program that we have. We are leveraging our program, our technical program, on the strengths of our world famous uh, faculty in areas of, um, of energy generation in terms of renewables, in energy storage, in smart grid systems. And then an overarching theme that we have in this, in this, direct, in this area is energy and the environment. And I look forward to uh, welcoming the new class in next year. Thank you. Thank you. So next, I'd like to introduce Professor Song Lee uh, from Bioengineering, uh, the Area Director for Translational Medicine. Hello, everyone. My name is Song Lee. I'm the Professor and Chair of Engineering. Uh, I serve as the uh, Director for Translational Medicine area. This area is highly interdisciplinary at the interface of engineering, uh, biological sciences, and medicine. So it integrates the faculty expertise from three uh, engineering departments in bioengineering, chemical and biomolecular engineering, and computer, uh, computational medicine. It also involves uh, broadly the faculty in engineering school and medical school for the capstone projects, for guest lecture, etc. In addition, uh, we also have industry speakers from pharmaceutical companies and biomedical device companies. So in this area, we do have uh, uh, several things going on. For example, in biology and medicine, there are a lot of new discoveries. On the other hand, in engineering field, there are a lot of advancement in technology. So our goal is to train the students to apply the technology and engineering principles to solve the problems in medicine. The courses actually are quite uh, broad and also there's some depth as well. On the website, probably you see about uh, five courses uh, there. But we do have more than that, about uh, 10 courses available as option. So for example, um, we have courses on uh, drug delivery. We have courses on um, tissue engineering by material. We also have courses to cover biomedical devices, such as a point of care diagnosis, uh, microfluidic devices, also instrumentation. We also have courses on biomedical imaging in uh, computational medicine. So this includes uh, machine learning and how you can apply this uh, algorithm to solve uh, problems in, in, uh, in medicine biology. For capstone projects, uh, we are gonna have partnership with industry. Uh, many of these companies are not listed in the slides. We do have a connection to the large pharmaceutical companies such as Amgen uh, and uh, uh, Genetech. Also biomedical devices companies such as Med, uh, Medtronics and uh, uh, AdWords, Life Sciences, et cetera. And we also have connections with many startups. So these capstone projects will be a, a 
truly a, a problem solving related to IND uh, real world problems, uh, I think uh, students will learn a lot. I also want to mention that I used to be at Berkeley and we uh, had uh, some uh, similar program in master in engineering involves both campuses. Uh, it's translational medicine involves UCSF in Berkeley. And at UCLA, we have an advantage, advantage to have both uh, top engineering schools and top medical schools on the same campus. It's a perfect place to uh, address this uh, uh, area and, and, and study here. Look forward to your application and hope for, uh, to have opportunity to work with you. Thank you. And um, so for more information, please uh, visit our website. It's mbng.ucla.edu. Or you can email us at mbng.cs.ucla.edu. Uh, so that concludes our presentation part. So I'd like to open the floor for uh, a Q&A. Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Shannon Rivoner. Um, our first question is how would you advise students on whether to pursue the current traditional UCLA MS degree or this new master's of engineering degree program? That's a very good question. That so certainly is up to individual. Um, so uh, as I mentioned that the master of engineering degree is a professional degree. Uh, it's also a terminal degree program. Uh, so if you are in the traditional MS program, after you finish, if you want, to, you, you have the option to, to move on to the PhD program. Uh, while in this case, a master of engineering degree is a terminal degree program. So, uh, um, so uh, which program is more suitable for you? And this is really uh, an individual's choice. Okay. But um, I think both programs are, are outstanding programs for you. Great. So a follow up to that is, uh, will employers view a single year degree with the same weight as a two year degree? Uh, not really. The, the on campus MS degree uh, can also be complete in one year. So. Um, Again, if you take three courses per quarter, you will be able to finish uh, nine courses in three quarters and complete your on-campus MS degree. Uh, so I do not see that, that the employer will treat these two degree uh, any uh, different. The next question. Um, if we're trying to get management education, how does this program compare to an MBA? Well, uh, certainly that um, MBA is uh, um, more extensive education. Uh, as far as I know, at the UCLA MBA program, it requires uh, 80 units uh, uh, to complete. And if you are a full-time student, it takes a full two year. Or if you are a part-time student, like uh, the fully employed MBA program, it takes uh, uh, three years to complete. Okay, so. Uh, we basically want to give you a foundation to move into the, the technology management and also understand not just the technical aspect of the technology, okay, but also you learn how to manage a project, learn how to communicate and learn how to work in a team. So essentially, uh, this will give you all the foundations that you need to be successful. Can you uh, clarify how much technical coursework is covered in this program? Uh, out of the 36 units required for degree completion, you need to take uh, 20 units of technical courses uh, or five courses in each the techni technology concentration. 
And as a follow up to that, is it possible to complete the program while being employed full time or concurrently with part time work? Um, as it is now, the program is designed to be a one year full time on campus program. Just to confirm, can international students apply to the program? And if so, does it come, uh, is it um, a STEM program? And will it be valid for OPT visa? Uh, yes, uh, international students are welcome to apply uh, to the program. And um, so uh, by the time when you finish the program, uh, you have stayed at UCLA campus for uh, a minimum of three quarters already. So you meet the criterion for uh, the OPT. And the answer is yes, you are eligible for OPT. Um, Will any admissions preference be given to current UCLA engineering students who will graduate in 2021? Yes, uh, the, the program is open to, to everyone. So a background in mechanical engineering would be a good fit for the program? Uh, background in chemical engineering, yes, of course. Um, like uh, Professor Dan has mentioned that um, uh, um, in the green energy system and as well as in Professor Lee's um, uh, tr tr translational medicine, Okay. So uh, we will uh, have courses in that uh, from chemical and biomolecular engineering. And also it's an interdisciplinary program. So the students from mechanical, from uh, electrical engineering or from chemical engineering, uh, they can apply to different program. Of course, uh, that you, need, you uh, need to take courses outside from your traditional chemical engineering program to broaden uh, your engineering uh, skill as well as the engineering uh, uh, knowledge. Okay. Um, given um, the circumstances around COVID, undergraduate um, engineering classes this past year at UCLA have been more theoretical without any hands-on learning. How would you describe this master's program? Is it more theoretical or more hands-on? What if COVID still requires online next fall? How will students receive practical application in this program? That's a very good question. Okay, so we, um, and so it really depends upon a uh, lot of factors related to COVID okay, and uh, the campus policy and also uh, any restriction from the LA Department of Public Health. Okay, so assuming that okay, uh, COVID, um, the availability of vaccine okay, and the students are all back to campus, and um, so, so we will be able to welcome the first cohort of students to campus on uh, by four quarter 2021. Uh, yes, uh, this program is designed to be very hands-on. Uh, so in addition to uh, the five uh, te uh, technical courses plus the three um, uh, professional engineering professional development courses, the still all the students need to complete a capstone. Uh, project. So the capstone project, as I mentioned earlier, that is designed to be a hand, hands-on experience and working on a project uh, which may be sponsored by uh, uh, the industry. And also the industry may also have uh, uh, their um, um, senior engineers to serve as the co-advisor for the, the capstone project in each technology concentration. Um, you mentioned uh, that work experience. Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah, sorry. No problem. Uh, uh, I'd like to invite all the area director to chip in any time. Okay. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned that work experience is not required. Um, however, will preference be given to older students, or is this really designed for students coming straight out of an undergraduate program? Uh, both, okay, so um, 
students in each cat in either they, they just uh, about to finish their undergraduate degree or they have been uh, working for a few years. Okay? And so they are all welcome to apply to the program. But I just want to mention that this will be a, a full-time on-campus program. Okay? It's not a part-time program at this moment. Is the Master's of Engineering program eligible for the ESAP program? Um, so, I mean, the, the, the ESA program is for the top students, top undergraduate students in the school. Okay? So um, if those are student apply, they would definitely be considered very favorably. And um, um, so I will have a separate meeting with uh, Dean um, uh, Rick Wessel about the ESA program, whether these students will be admitted automatically into the Master of Engineering program or not. And I will have an answer um, uh, early next week. For the first year, I understand there will be 50 students um, admitted. Does this mean the first year or for each area of study? Uh, so, um, we will have a total of 50 students for year one, okay? And then 100 students for year two, 150 for year three, and 200 uh, at year four. Okay, so um, at, at our capacity, we will have 200 students in the program after four years. Will there be an opportunity to lower the cost of tuition through a TA ship? I know for the MS degrees, you can get some of the costs covered of your tuition if you TA in the department. Uh, yes, if you're eligible to be a TA, um, that certainly uh, is a possibility, yes. And we also have set aside some funds available for uh, financial aid. Is there a list of required or recommended courses for each technical area listed somewhere? Um, so, um, Guy, you want to give you want to uh, answer that question? Um, you mean specifically for the AI concentration? Yeah, or? yeah. Is there a, a list of required or recommended recommended course uh, for your area? Um, yeah. So currently, I don't think that the, there is a list online except for maybe a sample curriculum. Um, so uh, I can definitely say for the AI concentration, there is. Uh, so I already mentioned there's uh, two versions of a deep learning course. Uh, there's two different course numbers: one in uh, electrical and computer engineering, the other one in computer science. And then another uh, kind of core part of that program is uh, CS260, which is the machine learning algorithms course, which will then go through all of the different machine learning models, training algorithms. Um, I mean, of course, yeah, I, I don't wanna you know, go through all of the options here, but I think uh, you know, maybe Jan Ming can confirm that uh, in, the, in the next few uh, weeks and months, uh, there will be more details about uh, exactly which courses uh, are, are, uh, are suggested for these programs. Okay, thank you. Uh, will admissions be based on the concentration that you select? That is, will you have target numbers for each concentration? Um, so our initial plan is to have almost, to, to kind of evenly distribute it uh, among six uh, technology concentrations, but that again, depending upon how many applicants are from each areas. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, so how many students per concentration? Uh, uh, as I mentioned that the initial plan is about eight to 10 students per technology concentration. But again, the, the, the actual number will uh, be different based upon the number of uh, applicants in each area. Is there any quota limitation for international students? No, we don't.
John, there is a question for you. Are there any prerequisite courses for data science? Uh, in terms of the preparation for the data science concentration, I think one way to think about it is that as long as you are a good engineering student, I think you are pretty much ready in the sense that uh, in order to be able to follow our curriculum, uh, you need to have the basic mathematics background, like we need to know the probability, basic probability, some statistics, and a little bit of like calculus and linear algebra. Like these basic classes that you teach, that you learn as an engineering student or maybe even science student, right? And I think as even science students are fine as long as they have a reasonable experience regarding the basics of the program. We don't expect that you have like five years of software engineering kind of a experience, but we do expect that you have used some software, uh, some programming language to implement something. Those are kind of the basics that we assume. And then as long as you have that much of a like, background, uh, we kind of set our curriculum so that even if it has, maybe it has been a while since you kind of learned these things, uh, the first two courses are more of like slightly undergraduate level kind of thing so that you can kind of brush up your skills and then you can gradually migrate into more advanced stuff later. So the answer is that as long as you are a reasonable science or engineering student, we expect that you will be able to follow our curriculum. So there's also a question about uh, how to prepare for the autonomous systems program. Um, so, um, um, as I mentioned that from the, um, the curriculum prepared by Professor Chow, um, uh, that has courses from mechanical aerospace engineering, computer science and ECE. Okay? And the students can select courses in, for example, vehicle systems and control and machine learning okay? and AI okay? and also a lot of simulation and modeling. Uh, electric vehicles and so on. So basically, it's a suitable for students with different background. Right? You can have a background in mechanical and mechanical engineering. Uh, students can also have a background in computer science or a background in electrical engineering. So we have a series of courses for you um, uh, uh, available for students from different backgrounds, uh, different pathways as well. Uh, so is the curriculum published in terms of course numbers? Uh, yes, we will have um, a sample courses in each technology concentration with course numbers. Okay. Uh, for example, we have MAE 273A listed in autonomous systems. Okay, MAE 273A is robust the control system analysis and design. Okay. And they also have listed ECE C247, which is a neural network and deep learning as one of the codes. Okay. And another example is um, uh, MAE 263A, which is a kinematic of robotic systems. Okay. So we will include all these course numbers uh, uh, in our website. Just to confirm, right now, the course lists are not available, right? We, but we will make it available pretty soon. Is it so, Jenny? Yeah, so we will add that to the website. Thank you. And there was also a question about uh, when are application due and when are admission decision made? Okay. So as it is now, um, the, the deadline for application is uh, December 1, which is the same as for all the on-campus program. Uh, however, we recognize that, okay, we just publicized this program. And um, so um, we have um, the flexibility to extend the application deadline until end of February. Okay? And in terms of the, the, the decision, uh, as long as your application package is complete and we will start our review and evaluation evaluation process. So we 
we'll uh, let you know about the decision as soon as we complete the evaluation. So I would say that the earlier you submit your application, okay, the earlier you will hear from us regarding the uh, decision. Uh, the last question is, will interview be conducted as part of the application package? Um, at this moment, no. So there's okay. another question. Um, if an admitted international student cannot get a visa to come to the US, Will it be possible to defer his or her um, enrollment for the following year? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, Bruce, uh, I have uh, the question for you. Uh, the, the student asked, what career option could be open to students of green energy uh, systems program after complete uh, completion of the program? Sure. Um, so there's already a number of uh, green energy uh, companies in the areas of solar cell and wind energy. Um, you're all familiar, of course, with electric vehicles. And of course, that's another huge area uh, involved. There's also a lot of work related to the, uh, the utilities. The utilities need people for smart grid. And smart grid, of course, is very much in, uh, in uh, essential importance in green energy. So the, there's a number of opportunities they run the gamut from things that are really very technological to those which are much more business oriented. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, here are uh, some, again, uh, just uh, um, a several area, a faculty area director. Okay, so uh, if you have any additional questions, uh, please uh, feel free to email us. We also have a list of FAQ uh, the, uh, on the website. Okay. So Christine, uh, back to you. Thank you, Ding Yan. At this point, I think we answered most of your questions. Uh, we are going to continue to answer questions uh, through our email and you can always check out the latest FAQ on our website. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank you, thank you all for joining us. We have another webinar on November 9th at the same time, just in case for some reason that you wish to join us again, you can always RSVP. With that, thank you all for joining and have a good rest of the evening or the good rest of the day, depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you all.